Good morning, welcome back to another episode of Ali's Digger Diary. If you haven't already, please click the subscribe button. Right, the time of filming this is Thursday, but I'm going to take you back in time to yesterday. Wednesday, welcome back. Is it Wednesday? It is Wednesday. Got my welder generator, I've got my welding wire, welding cables. I've um, got some blocks of wood, got my track guide to go right down in there. So, the, the guide goes, mm, there's a bolt hole there. That one's actually totally come out, which is good. But the other three, I can feel a stud just poking out there. So that's today's job. Um, just saying to the driver, because he was saying, oh, is this, uh, have you got somewhere else to be after this? And I says, oh no, bad to book anything in after this. You can't just say, right, it'll only take me an hour to do this, because it might take me an hour just to get one stood out. Um, so I'm going to do this, and then whatever's left of the day, I've got a micro digger back at Carlisle. Ah, another one, uh, to PDI. So that's the plan for today. Right, let's, at least it's not raining. It was on the way here. Thank God it stopped. I've got the uh, bit kind of dug out. You can see that one there is the one that's uh, fallen out. Got one back there, which if you look, you can see the stud sticking up out. It's the same story for this one back here. You can see the stud sticking out and the same for this one here. So, I've dug it all out, uh, I've sprayed it with WD-40. With a bit of luck, I might get some vice grips on the inside and um, maybe wiggle it out. That'd be really nice. I don't hold much hope for me welding and uh, I've brought it with me as a last resort. <laughs> So that's my plan. I've sprayed them to death with WD-40. I'm going to drop the tension of the track and I'm going to chuck these blocks of wood underneath it so it's not going to fall. I mean, I guarantee you it won't drop any, but um, yeah, definitely a, definitely should put wood underneath there just in case. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll bat them with a hammer and a punch just to kind of shock the threads a bit and then fingers crossed will just spin out. Are we positive? Positive thinking. <laughs> I hope so. So we all remember now how to take the tension out of these trucks. We screw the valve in the way. And look at that. Didn't hang off it. Didn't, you know, make a performance of it. Just screw it in. It falls down out the way. And it drops your socket and then the socket gets covered in grease. <laughs> Why wouldn't it, you know? Oh, lovely. Right, I'm gonna actually back that off because I don't wanna spend an hour pumping these tracks back up. Even though I do have the electric gun. Right, I've got this first one wiggling, look. Fingers crossed. I can just wind that out. No, of course not. Oh. Right, I'll persevere then. Persevere out with these. Aha! One broken bolt. now. Marvellous. I just persevered. Once I got it moving with the bigger grips, I got the smaller ones in there and I could get much more of a turn, but it's just a case of patience backwards and forwards and just gradually turn it round and round. Because the problem is where it's broken the threads will be all damaged, so you just want to gently backwards and forwards, otherwise you're not screwing up. Uh, I've got the next one moving. I'll persevere with this one. Fingers crossed. By the time I get to this one, 
I've just tried to uh, put these on. There's, this is the only one that's got a bit sticking out of it and I've tried a couple of bits just to try and get a bite but I can't get it. So I'm hoping by the time I get this one out, I'll spray this one up again with WD-40 and fingers crossed I'll get at it from the inside. Done. I changed my tactic with that rather than try to pull that one up through. I got it moving so far and then went back down the way just because access and space in there was worse than that far side. So I'm going to try that with that one over there because I've probably chewed up the threads what's left out of it. Um, it'll probably be torture trying to get it back up up the way so I'm going to try and get it moving backwards and forwards and try and encourage it to come down and out. I, it's always the last one that is the most stubborn isn't it? Hey man I can't get that to budge at all. I've tried three different sizes of vice grips, I've hammered it, I've squared it with WD-40, hammered it again from underneath can't get it to go. So that leaves me now with two options coming out of the wind. First option is to square it with WD-40 and go and have some lunch. Second option is to weld the nut to the bottom of it. So we've still got options. Um, so I'm going to have some lunch aren't I? Well, my 20 minute lunch break didn't yield any results. So as you can see, I've welded, oh, I'll try to weld one nut. <laughs> that one just fell off. <laughs> so I've got one on there. Oh God, that looks like it's gonna last about 30 seconds. But maybe a bit of heat might improve the job. I am not confident. Tell you what, that bumming thing, it's diesel. And it's a hell of a lump to get in and out the van. So I just thought, oh, I'll just leave it in there, but how warm is that? Ah, it's not hot. It's all right, just put a bit of soot on there. Yeah, that's some bloody thing, that like. Um, I'm tempted just to kindle it up again and just try and get a bit more in there because it's a bit hollow looking. Yeah, that ain't gonna do anything for me, that, I don't think. Oh, this is my worst. Welding is my worst subject. I often thought it was electrics. I get to a certain point with electrical fault finding where I'm out of ideas. Same with hydraulic troubleshooting, but welding, don't do enough of it to be any good at it. <laughs> well, I've tried and tried and better tried welding didn't work. Damn. So, my last option is drill it, hopefully. Didn't want to do that either. Ah. This is one of them jobs, right? So, Just, I mean, those first two bolts took about 40 45 minutes to get up. This last one's taken, and it's just like you can't, you know, I've only set this to do today because you just don't know how long you're going to be. And perfect illustration as to why, you know, if I'd have booked a service after this, I'd be mithered by what time you're going to be here, are you far off? So. I knew this was going to be a fight. Perseverance. 
perseverance out the wind that has taken so much work there we go three bolts removed it's three o'clock now I was here for 11 what a job so I'll run a tap through the holes and then uh, fire that guide back on, pump the tracks up and head home. Half an hour, 40 minutes, hopefully. Okay, holes are tapped. What I do now is just take the paint off here, clean up the underside of there, whack that on, bolt it up and go. That's the plan anyway. Right, track guide's on. Um, and when I ran that bolt up the, I knew that was a sketchy. When I tapped it, I knew it was sketchy because the tap was kind of going in all wobbly. Um, so what I've done, I don't know if you can see, but I've put a nut on it. There it is. See that? So it's got a nut on it. Right. Um, for anybody concerned about my safety working on a job like this, the driver's just sat in his car over there. So I've also got phone signal and I've had a lot of missed calls, but I've just not had the patience to speak to anybody today. <laughs> that has taken all of my patience. That last bolt. Anyway, jack the tracks up now. All right, that's the track tensioned. About four fingers. That'll do. That'll do, donkey, that'll do. Let's have a square up, hellfire. I've got stuff scattered everywhere. So now we're back to Thursday. Sun is almost trying to shine. I'm heading down South Cumbria. I've got Big Bertha to go and service. So I'll uh, add this little clip to the, uh, or a few clips to the end of the video and I'll show you Big Bertha. It's just a big service. and um, There's a 14 tonner to do as well. As long as there's no broken bolts and the sun shines, it's gonna be a good day. It can only be a good day. Right then, this is Big Bertha. It's actually that big that I can't get it in one shot. Hang on. There-ish. Um, so this old shovel is getting its annual service. Um, so it's a DL550. The next biggest shovel, which is the biggest shovel of the shovel range, is the 580. So it's just one step down from being the biggest, um, but it is the biggest that 
I look after, and I think it might be the biggest do sand shovel in Cumbria. I think that's a good educated guess, unless there's like somebody from down south fetching a 380 up to load a crusher or take stuff away from a crusher in a quarry that I don't visit, then to the best of my knowledge, this is the biggest one. So, it's getting its annual service. Um, so basically, I'm just giving it a thousand hour service. And with that comes various different running repairs. As you can see, we've got an oil leak on the filter housing here, which new o-ring on there should cure that. We've got a knock sensor wire hanging down and touching the exhaust. Thankfully, the wiring is still intact. Everything's okay. We've got these little jackets, heat shield jackets that need uh, reattaching. That's on this side. Got a bit of accident damage on the back here. I can't do much about that. Um, on this side, it's poor to start after the weekend. Um, once it's gone during the week, it's absolutely fine. But uh, on a Monday morning, it's a bit lazy to try and get going. Um, so it'll be about a year since I serviced this last. So we're going to start with the basics and give it a full service. Um, but these, there's like a non-return valve in here and a non-return valve in here. Um, and they can let fuel run back to the tank. So we're gonna inspect them while we're doing the filters. Um, and I'll know as soon as I start trying to prime the fuel up, I'll know whether I'm just pumping fuel around and around in circles here, whether we've got an issue. Um, but yeah, we'll start with the fuel filters. Uh, what else is to do? There's a park brake switch and a wiper blade. And no doubt I'll notice other bits and pieces while I'm scurrying all over it um so yeah I, this the weather is good outside but i took the opportunity to work in a shed because just because the weather's good now doesn't mean it won't be pouring it down in an hour <laughs> so i'll uh, i'll crack on with this and i'll show you bits and pieces as i go right that's the engine service complete i've done air filters just put an engine oil in it it's 10 to 1 so i'm gonna have some lunch um, didn't get here till 11, half 11, so I feel like I'm getting on well. Transmission and hydraulic filters, cab filters. Um, and then we'll be finished with this and hopefully, if I get on well, I'll get that 40 tonner down the yard done as well. That'll be really good. Good, so I'm just gonna have a quick lunch. Basically, while that is draining, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll fill in, I'll have some lunch. Gonna copy Ollie Blogs now, but quiz question. What's that? Put your answers down in the comments below. Somebody commented, um, when I started the video at the beginning of the week there, I said I was in a Morrison's car park and somebody commented saying I was I was uh, a posh person for buying food at uh, Morrison's. Well, I wasn't buying food, I was just using the toilet and then I was going to fill up with diesel, but um, wait till you see this. Eating like a king today. Decided to treat myself after yesterday's hardship. <laughs> All right, we're up and running. Transmission oil. I'll be all right once I get it moving. Get up into here. Have some peace. Oh, hey, tell you what. That done too bad there. 10 past three. We'll definitely get that 140 done today, which will be nice. There is a shovel on the way home that I need to call into if I can um, to have a look at an oil leak. So we'll bring you along for that if I get to it before this shut. Um, what am I doing? I'm going to look at the, what am I doing? Transmission calibration. There we go, I'm monitoring. That's our transmission temp. No, not hot enough yet. Uh, I'll, I'll warm the transmission up a bit. Right, got it warmed up, doing a clutch calibration, and when that's finished, that'll be the service complete. 7,650 hours, I must write that down. Here's one for you plant spotters. Bit of classic plant, bit of brand new gear look. So that is our 420 CVT. 
which is why I'm here today. They're having a go with that on demo, and uh, that meant that they could give me the 420 without it being a weekend. Grand. That boiler suit is, uh, well, it could just about stand up on its own, look. I'll give it a blow off with the airline when I finish this next service. That one's next, the 140. I'm just looking at the back of this cab and the back window. Imagine what the fella on the seat must have looked like when he scooped that bucket full. <laughs> They've been absolutely pebble dash. <laughs> oh dear. Right, quick service on this. It's a while since I've been a Perkins engine one, is it? Oh no, maybe not. I did one in the woods not so long ago. Right, engine oil's done, pilot, engine oil filter. Oh, it doesn't, maybe hasn't done so much since I last did it, look. It's done 869 hours since I last serviced it, so I'll do a thousand on it, I think. Because after that, yeah, I'll do a thousand hour service on it. I was going to do a two, but there's no point changing the air filters if I did them last time I was here. Like I say, they just get us in once a year to service everything, so some stuff's done way over, some stuff done pretty close, it sort of varies. Okay, time is five o'clock. And I'm dead happy, I've got everything done that I wanted to get done today. That one thought it was going to be a bonus, but that big shovel wasn't in bad shape to be fair. Um, so, time to head north. Been a dry day. Phone's been bloody busy though, it really has. Any road. They're all problems for other days. Got to save something to look forward to. <laughs> Friday! Hooray! Quick little job to squeeze in this morning before I go and service a 20 tonner up in the woods. Uh, that shovel down there has an oil leak. Uh, that's the one that I was wanting to try and call into yesterday. But basically, I made me little two, three year old a promise uh, yesterday morning that I'll be back in time to read him his bedtime stories. Um, and when you make promises like that, you don't break them, do you? So. Um, just with the way time was, um, I got back in time for bedtime last night. So, uh, I've made time this morning to come down and put this oil leak right, because you never know, it might, it looks like in the pictures, it's just an o-ring on a fitting. Okay, so, hydraulic oil leak is either that pipe there, or the fitting, or the one just at the back there because it's drier further up as you can see and it's dry on that pipe there so I would imagine if we put a spanner on one of them pipes we should be able to feel which ones come loose it might even be that 90 degree elbow there that directional 90 might be loose but that is feeding the that's the electric steering valve that down there so it'll be leaking when he's steering, um, is my best guess. Because this fella likes his electric armrest steering. So I'll grab a, what size are we thinking? 22 and a 19. We'll see if any of them's loose. So let's have a look at this one here. That loose. Yeah. yeah, it feels tight. I'm put the far really. That's tight. I think it'll be that pipe fitting. Mm, it's not in a handy spot. Mm, that wasn't particularly tight. 
that 19. Into 17. Good. Hang on. Like, I think it's uh, this one here. Right, I've got that pipe cracked. I'll try and take it off. No pressure in it. like not up to much is it I'm gonna replace that o-ring so I've taken the fitting right out I'll uh, peel these o-rings out if I find a pick there's a good one we'll just replace both these seals and that's a bit flattened We'll put these o-rings in, we'll clean it up with brake cleaner, we'll work the steering backwards and forwards and then go from there. Lovely, should be the right one. One. Right, we'll go and put this on and we'll try it. Right, clean up the surface before we fit it. Ugh. Line that. Line that in. It's oh, easier said than done. There we go. Somewhere about there. We'll lock that off once we get this pipe on. We'll do that. Maybe a two hander and I can't get two hands in. It's all dry there now, we'll just jump in the cab and work the steering backwards and forwards. Or left and right, not backwards and forwards. Still leaking. Right, we've just tested it. And that's it all dry in there. We can make it out. Somewhere. All dry. Right, I'll put this plate back on. Top up the hydraulic oil level. Okay, shovel man is back to work. It is half 11. Um, I need to get back up to Carlisle now, which will be easier said than done because on the way down the way, so southbound traffic on the M6 is fine, but uh, there's a wagon over between Shack and Penrith. So all the traffic is coming off at Shaft and going along the A6, which if you didn't know is a 
A road that runs next to the M6, it would have been the old route between London and Carlisle. Um, so I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna go try and try and cut it all out, but guarantee I won't be the only one trying to cut it all out. I knew I wouldn't be the only one trying this little route. Um, it's taken a lot longer than I expected to get back up to Carlisle, so I'm gonna knock the micro digger on the head. The customer's not picking it up till lunchtime on Monday, so we'll get that one nipped in the bud Monday morning first thing. I'm just gonna go straight up to my service because it's nearly one o'clock now. And I'll have a two hour drive from where I'm at now to get to it. Oh, the joys. Right, it's 20 to 3. I've got a 500 hour service to do on this to finish the week. Happy days. I'll be caught up with servicing after this, I think. Don't think there's any more diggers to service. But there will be next week, knowing my luck. Any road. Uh, we're all set up. The weather is windy. So it's not exactly filming weather. And I've got one of them gauge panel updates to do on this one as well. And there's another DX10 micro digger to PDI, so I'm gonna rattle them two off on Monday morning. Good idea, though. I left that quarry at half past 11. I feel like all I've done today is try. So it's half past four and that means it's home time. I was gonna go through the yard because um, I'll be back at the yard for about 20 to six. Um, and I could have done maybe, I could have got away with an hour or so on a DX10 PDI in it, but you just get to that stage, don't you, where you've, you've done enough for the day. <laughs> you feel like you have anyway. Just been sat in the sea for the most of it. Anyway. Um, I've sort of made a conscious effort in the videos the last two or three weeks to not include too much servicing. Um, so let me know in the comments what you think because it's kind of panned out all right because I've had a good variety of sort of breakdowns and sort of different jobs to show you. Um, but the purpose of these videos is to show an accurate day in the life of a plant mechanic. So that's why I'm kind of showing you these clips where I'm like, right, I'm here, I'm servicing this machine, but I don't actually show you servicing it. Um, so I'll be trying to include that in, just so folk can see, you know, bits and pieces. So let me know in the comments what you think. Would you prefer to so sort of see a time lapse of the service or just no servicing at all, or just the occasional service here and there? What would you like to see in the videos? I'd appreciate that if you all put a constructive comment uh, down below that'd be good too because I mean what you've just watched there is the last basically the last three days work um, sort of condensed into that video I probably if I'd have filmed everything I probably could have got two two and a half videos out of it so it kind of means that you know videos might not be as regular Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think. Right, I'll switch this off before I get onto the tarmac. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please let me know by clicking the like button. Click the subscribe button if you haven't because 52% of you haven't. Just saying, I'm just saying, hey, it's just what they're telling me at YouTube. Um, so yeah, I'd appreciate it if you do. It doesn't cost anything to click the subscribe button. And all that means is that when I put a new video on YouTube, which is usually every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, you get a little notification. If you don't want those notifications, just, just turn your notification off in your settings and then I benefit by your subscribership and uh, you benefit by seeing my videos. Right, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.